YouTube, my name is Jacob, and today I'm going to show you how to make an Abacus Magic the Gathering Life Counter. Uh, there are a couple other videos on YouTube here, uh, one by Zen of Ben and another by uh, Sub Barker, where they've made these life counters, and I thought they were pretty cool. Uh, some of the other comments that were on those videos were, how was this done, is there a tutorial, how many cards did you use? So today, I'm going to give you all that information and show you how they did it. Okay, so these are all the components that you're going to need, and I'll go over why you need them a little bit later. But uh, you're going to start off with a cutting mat, uh, your metal cutters, you have um, pliers here, a X-Acto knife or any other cutting tool, some glue, you have your beads that you're going to use as a life counter, safety pin or any other straight metal object, and then you have your cards. And I have about 20 here. Um, the number of cards is going to depend on uh, the size of your bead. To determine exactly how many cards you need, you want to take your bead and put it um, right up to the edge of the cards like so. And you're going to want extra cards um, on either side. And as long as you have that, you have enough cards. The next step is to cut out the text boxes of each of your 20 cards. You'll notice I've done that on here uh, already. It took me approximately 15 minutes to cut them all out. Um, the other thing that you need to take note of is if you're using both new and old cards, you'll notice that the text boxes and image boxes are of different sizes. For the next step, I have uh, cut out the image boxes on all my extra cards. Uh, since the Jingle and Automaton is going to be going on the top, I, what I did was I actually cut out uh, the background and I left the foreground intact attached to the card and what this is going to do is, is give me that cool depth of image um, that you see in uh, some of the other ones that were posted online. I'll show you a quick demonstration here. Simply by placing um, a couple cards on top I am creating a, a bit of a window effect where you're already looking into the card. And then by placing that over top of uh, a full, a fully imaged one, you, you get a little bit of depth. I'm going to go into um, more depth than that and create a, a couple more levels, but that's basically what you're going to be looking at. So the next step here is I've taken my beads and I've placed them onto my safety pins which I have uh, straightened out using my pliers. And now what I need to do is I need to uh, make a cut uh, with my metal cutters just to make the pins uh, just a little bit smaller than the outside of the magic cards. Okay, so I have now cut out all the image boxes. Um, I glued the pieces into two separate piles here. Uh, I have about ten cards in each. And the next thing I did was I cut um, some little lines here for my pins to sit in. If we put the pieces like this, you're going to see two little slots. One right there and one right here. And that's so that these pins with the beads are simply just going to sit right inside these slots so that there's not going to be a large gap. Um, as you can see the pin fits in there perfectly. And the reason why you want to do this is if you have um, the pin sitting let's say right up here and I pull that you can see there's a large gap and even if I glue that down with really strong glue there's going to be um, a bit of a bulge there and you don't want that. So I bas basically just measured out um, the distance I wanted from each end and I made a little incision with my X-Acto knife just big enough so that the pin can fit in there and then I'm just going to glue that down. Um, obviously making sure that I have the beads on the pin uh, before I glue that on there. Okay, so we are nearing the last steps here. I've gone ahead and I've uh, glued all the cards together. I have my um, 
little pieces all stuck in there and uh, the whole stack is is glued together as one piece so that's basically uh, the end result now I just need to um, do some something with the artwork here what I've decided to do was actually remove the entire jangling automaton here uh, from the top card and I'm actually going to uh, layer it I have little stacks here of uh, pieces of leftover text boxes and images and whatnot that I cut out and I'm actually going to glue these down on top and then glue that on top of the piece and basically it's just going to give it a little bit of a, a layered effect here something like that sitting there I have uh, one for his leg as well which I will put in first and that will be down at a a lower level here I'm gonna have to glue that right over top of where his leg will be something like that this is gonna be a base for the, the ground piece that's going in and it will eventually look like that so we're going to have the Jingling Automaton in the front there, his leg just a little bit in the background, and then finally the very uh, background image, which is a full full art Jingling Automaton in the background. And that right there is uh, going to be your finished product, minus uh, some art that I might put in, in behind the, um, the life counter here, and I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that just yet. Okay, so I am finished. I've glued those pieces on, and as you can see, I got a little bit of uh, depth of image there, which is pretty sweet. I'm uh, quite pleased with uh, how this turned out. This was my first one I've ever made. Um, I just calculated uh, from the other videos that I watched how it was done. Uh, the last step is just going to be to put something in behind, uh, uh, in behind the beads here. Uh, to give it some a little extra flavor. I wanted to pick something with similar color so I have a juggernaut here from M11. You're gonna just turn the artwork so it's facing down so your artwork is upside down and you simply put that over top and uh, glue that down um, and I wanted to kinda go with something with a similar uh, similar color sequence there. I thought that could work um, another one was to go with the uh, Dragon's Claw from M11 and put that in behind for more of a, a fire look. Again, you're going to want something there where the beads kind of stand out and you can, you can see and count them if you're going to put something in behind there. But that is basically it. That's uh, all I need to do is pick something, turn it upside down, glue it on behind, and I will be finished. So to finish off this tutorial, I wanted to do a quick review. I want to go over uh, some of the problems that I came across and just give you guys some tips of what to and what not to do. The first thing, uh, the first problem was the size of the text boxes and image boxes, old cards versus new cards. I've already mentioned this, they were different sizes. So if you just cut out just the text box and the image box of all your cards, you're going to have different sized openings if you're mixing new and old cards. So be aware of that uh, before you just go ahead and cut your cards. Secondly were the beads that I chose. They were actually too large and they didn't fit uh, in, in, the little, in the little text box opening. So I ended up having to cut my uh, beads in half and that just worked great. Luckily for me they were a flimsy plastic and I was able to cut them in half. So be aware of the size of your beads and make sure that they're going to fit before you start working on your project. The last thing was actually the glue that I used. I just used a simple glue stick and it was crap. Um, it got all over the place, all over the cards, all over my finger. It made things really sticky, hard to work with. I suggest that you use something with a finer tip and you're going to be able to do a little more accurate uh, job of, of placing the glue and sticking your cards together. 
The last thing that I did want to mention was the duration, how long it took me to to make this Abacus Life Counter. Uh, start to finish, I would approximate it to an hour and a half. That's everything from cutting out image boxes, text boxes. Um, I actually took a, a black felt line and I, I marked the white edges that I cut just to make it uh, a little bit darker, give it a more shadow effect rather than having a, a bright white line uh, inside. Uh, so yeah, everything all together, an hour and a half approximately. So hopefully that gives you an accurate measure of uh, whether this is something you want to spend uh, time doing or not. Alright, uh, I wish you the best of luck if you're going to go ahead and make one of these. Good luck.